So my name is Brooke Levis. I'm a third year PhD student at McGill University and I'm studying epidemiology. Um, I'm working with Dr. Brett Toombs and Dr. Andrea Benedetti and my research is on uh, the diagnostic accuracy of a depression screening tool. Show more spine to me means really like thinking about both sides of the coin and what are the benefits and the harms of also of screening for these psychiatric disorders. Especially in depression, one of the biggest problems is that, so I think Marlene talked about how there's these screening tools which are used to try and help you get a diagnosis. And so many times people just use this screening tool and think that it's diagnostic on its own. So then they just, they pick some cutoff and they say that if you're above it, you have the disease and you're, you must be depressed, or if you're below it, that you do not have the disease. Um, whereas in, in reality, it's only of the people who score above this cutoff, a large portion of them may have the disease, but it's not all of them. And there's a lot of false positives and people don't realize it. And there's so many studies that have been done that have even used the interchangeably the screen positives from a screening tool and call them cases. A lot of the, tr the treatments for depression, they, they don't even work for the people who are just above the cutoff. So if you, if you were not um, like if identified, if you were only identified as depressed from um, this questionnaire, um, you're probably not the highest level of uh, depression because it's on a spectrum. It's not something that you have or you don't have. It's a huge um, spectrum of mental health. And if you're, if you're at the lowest end of it, that you're just borderline into um, what they're calling a case, these are the, this has been shown in studies that these are not the people who are going to benefit from um, taking um, prescription drugs. So then there's all the harms of taking drugs that you don't necessarily need and you probably would have gotten better just on your own. A lot of studies have looked at these screening tools and compared um, what they do to um, an actual interview with a psychiatrist or psychologist. And, but all of these studies um, are done with very small sample sizes, so we're gathering all the data from around the world that has ever been done and putting it together to create a huge database of almost 20,000 patients where we can look at this um, with a higher le level of precision. And also because we have so many patients, we can also start looking at individual risk factors and starting to make this more patient-centered and really come up with the best way to use these screening tools that we can more effectively try and classify people or give them predicted probabilities of depression.